Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Alex Claro, I'm the technical director of Perdicom and today we're going to be talking about Ruckus Unleashed. We're going to be looking at how to position Ruckus Unleashed management platforms, um, what it is, which is obviously a cost-effective solution without compromises, and taking a look at the new controller architecture known as 200.13. So the main benefit is that it's a very cost-effective solution. So there's low upfront costs, there's lower administrative costs, there are no hidden costs, you pay for the access point, you pay for your support and you can get all features. There's migration flexibility, so every unleashed platform could be migrated to Ruckus Cloud or Ruckus Smart Zone very simply and easily. So you get all the goodness of performance, enterprise grade features and the ease of management at a very affordable price. In fact, Ruckus Unleashed is one of the most affordable product portfolios within Ruckus. We understand that small businesses are constantly facing cost constraints. There is no need to buy a controller or buy additional software to manage the APs, leading to a low upfront cost scenario. Additionally, an Unleashed network is so easy to deploy and manage, there is little to no need for any IT personnel, therefore lowering administrative costs. We actually have a video where we've set up Ruckus Unleashed in under three minutes from unboxing to deployment. So it is very, very quick. As mentioned, there are no hidden costs for features that come with Ruckus Unleashed, such as guest access, res resiliency, and zero IT provisioning. We want to ensure that your investment in Ruckus is fully protected, and you can expand your Unleashed network across multiple locations with Ruckus Unleashed Multi-Site Manager. When your business grows even further, you can migrate to a controller-based solution or a cloud-based solution with the exact same Ruckus Unleashed access points. Ruckus Unleashed controller solution. So it's a simple deployment. As mentioned, you can literally configure it within minutes. It eliminates complexities of setting up a controller. You can improve your network investment protection by reducing your total cost of ownership and increase your return on investment because it's easy to migrate between an on-premise or cloud controller should you need to. And it of course delivers high performance. You can deliver an optimum wireless experience reliably as well for the network to meet customers' growing needs. And in case you're worried, Ruckus Unleashed does allow you to have a master backup access point. So if one of the access points was to fail, there'd be a backup access point ready to go. So you never have any downtime in that scenario. So what are the typical deployment scenarios? So any access point can actively serve clients. The Unleashed network can support up to 128 access points and up to 2,048 clients, provided you're on version 208 or greater. All member access points are potentially standby access points, apart from a mesh access point for obvious reasons, because if you lose the mesh, you then lose your control. It enables dynamic resiliency for greater reliability, and network works till the last AP with an, and connection is alive. So what that means is that should you lose your master and backup access point, another one is elected to be a master or backup. So until the last access point is offline, you'll always have a unleashed network ready to work and function and serve clients. You have the power in the palm of your hand because there is a nice app. You can literally go through it. You click connect to the configure me SSID. You click start. It's going to show you some notifications about how to use the, the app management. And you can manage it from everywhere. And finally, you can invite other people for help. So you can ask for help with just a tap, whether it's your support provider, whether it's Ruckus themselves, or a colleague, for example. Unleashed is designed for ease of use in mind. The app takes us very, very far forward. It's simplistic, it's easy to use, easy to manage. The dashboard also gives the administrator an ability to quickly create a new wireless LAN network or modify an existing network with minimal fuss, minimal hassle. You can of course see how many clients are connected, how many access points are online or offline, and how many SSIDs you're currently broadcasting. So what are some of the key unleashed features? We have guest pass, and that also incorporates social login. So this is fully customizable. You can see anywhere where there's a pencil icon. We can actually modify the image. We can modify the text. We can decide whether we want Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, for example we can fully customize what it looks like. So a few words on authentication. One risk is we have one password for all employees. The password is rarely changed. 
it's hard to identify an end user device. Employee may leave the company who could still have access to the corporate network. And if employee leaves the company, it might be considered too complex to change that password because you then have to change the password on every single employee's device. So no matter which way you, you try and do that, it's always going to be convoluted. And it also doesn't allow you to grow the network. Um, if you need to evolve into uh, a three-tier structure, for example, where you've got switching, wired and wireless, it can become a bit of a pain. So your network needs to go beyond that. So what we have here is the concept of dynamic pre-shared key. So how does this differ? Well, we can have multiple pre-shared keys per device or per user. So each user gets given a unique key. So why that is great is that when the employee goes, we delete that user's key, that key is removed. That means that no one else can guess the password. But better yet, it's using a single SSID. Therefore, everyone connects to the same SSID with their unique password. It means all the users are easily identifiable. As mentioned, the advantages are one password per employee can easily identify the end user device or the end user themselves. Once you delete the, the PSK, that is deleted and all devices will no longer be able to connect that we're using it. And it's very, very simplistic. Now we come on to 802.1x authentication, which we also support. So why is this great? Well, we use certificates. So instead of using a username and password, we have a certificate embedded on the device. We use Windows Active Directory or an equivalent LDAP server. We can use a radius server such as Windows MPS, for example, network policy server. And we can use group policies and push certificates to the devices. We can then easily identify the end user device. We can access the, sorry, access of the end user is deactivated when we deactivate the Active Directory entity, so whether that be the computer or the user. The only problem is it can be quite complex and it does require certificate installation on user devices. However, it's very simplistic to do. If you do need to do that, here at Perdicom we can guide you through that. We actually have some guides on how to do that as well. Um, and it's very simple and probably one of the most secure ways of actually authenticating users in the modern world. So authentication is great, but how do you troubleshoot a device? Well, Ruckus Unleashed has an enhancement called client connectivity. This is also available on Ruckus Cloud and Ruckus Smart Zone. Effectively, you select the device or you put in a MAC address you would like to trace. And when you click start, what it will then do is it's going to look at all the authentication parameters. So you could try running for both connected or clients that are trying to connect. You can narrow down the connectivity issue and you also have a timestamp to see when the issue occurred. So in this example here, we've got our timestamp at 1624. And we can see that it's had a successful authentication because it's got a DHP acknowledgement. But you could hover over the info icon and it's going to tell you the VLAN or it's going to tell you the IP address that that machine has been given. We can also break this down further. So for example, in the four-way handshake at 1624, if we see that at frame two it fails, well we then know that the device, or the user rather, has entered an incorrect password. Therefore, we need to ask them to re-enter in the password, and once a successful password has been entered, it should then allow them onto the network. We then have switch management. So Ruxton Leach does offer what I like to call switch management light. So all that allows you to do is monitor your switches. You can upgrade firmware, it will show you the information about them. So it will tell you your POE budget, what's available, what's being used. It will show you what's connected, what's not connected, or what's blocked by the administrator. We can take that step forward and we can see you know, what's providing POE power, what's up, what's down, the administrative status, the port number, the port name, which we can rename as well. Or if we select a port, we can actually see the traffic trend as well and see the transmit, the receive, and the total bandwidth it's being used. As you can also see here, we get the speed and we also get the POE used versus what's been allocated to it. So as of November 2022, a new version called 200.13 was released. And what this allowed you to do is migrate from the zone director that was end of sale to either a smart zone, Ruckus Cloud or Ruckus Unleashed platform. So as stated, Ruckus Unleashed is the replacement for the zone director 1200 series. And it allowed you to have things such as a dedicated master, enlarge and uh, 4, 000, up to 4,000 clients, 
Layer 3 Discovery, Tunnel with WLAN support, and Zone Director to AP Migration, which is massive if you're moving from a Zone Director to a Rux Unleashed platform. Previously, you had to factory reset all the APs. This offers a nice migration path. So a dedicated master. This is based on using an R750 or an R850 in a controller only mode. It allows you to have smart redundancy, whereby one access point will automatically take over from the other. You'd have layer three discovery support. So if you are using a public network or you've got lots of different VLANs where your access points may sit in one VLAN and your controller may sit in another, we now have a layer three discovery process. We have tunnel support, so we can actually tunnel an access point into the controller and it would present whatever you want it to present, but it would allow you to have effectively have no VLANs at the edge network and the VLANs would only be presented to the control access point. We have up to 128 access points, but we now support for 4,000 clients. So dedicated master, we now see that we've got smart redundancy and it's simply a tick box. To enable smart redundancy, select the peer IP address, and then it allows you to have that smart redundancy functionality to ensure continued operation of your network in the event of an unleashed failure or power loss. We also have dedicated master, so you can select which access point will be the master AP. What this does do, however, is disable the Wi-Fi service on that access point. Then we have migration options. So there's a long table. I'm not going to talk through it all. I'm going to leave it on screen for a few moments, but it does show the differences between Zone Director and Unleashed, uh, the types of access points that are supported in terms of models, and if you do pay attention to the, or the orange highlighted section, as they show you the models which are no longer supported uh, moving forward. So the big question is, how do you migrate from Zone Director to Unleashed? So when the user chooses a dedicated master mode, the AP can upload AP firmware of various models. In master mode, the user can only upload one AP model firmware. You preload the 200.13 and above on the selected dedicated master AP. You connect the zone director APs to a dedicated master network. The dedicated master automatically joins zone director APs once connected. And the dedicated master automatically upgrades zone director APs through the HTTPS connection. Optionally, you can use um, DHP option 43, or you can go onto the CLI and set the using zone director command, primary zone director address, and the access point will then connect to it that way. Solo access points cannot join dedicated master networks, and mesh APs must be manually configured in dedicated master mode. And there is a link to click on, which will take you through to the full process and deployment guide. Thank you for watching today's video.